See, the reason we're revisiting this show so soon is because I actually like this one. That's it, that's my intro. I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we're revisiting Joe Millionaire for Richer or Poorer, which I will continue to call Joe Millionaire because the full title is annoying. Joe Millionaire for Richer or Poorer has finished airing. Usually I like to wait a little longer after one of these shows finishes uh, because I like to see who's gonna stand the test of time and who won't. Lately, it's like a speed run for these reality TV couples. Very quick, we know pretty early on. Hermes, you're gonna drive me crazy. So a few weeks back, I did a video on the first two episodes of this show, and I spoke very highly of the show. I love this show, and I wanna make that very clear. I have some complaints about how things ended up playing out, but the show itself is great. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through episode by episode, point by point, because that would be a waste of both of our times. Before I go on talking about this show, I'm gonna be talking about Carolyn a lot. And I wanted to apologize because in the first video that I did this, I kept calling her Caroline because they kept calling her Caroline. Her name is actually Carolyn. And I think even Kurt for most of the show continued to call her Caroline, <laughs> but her name is Carolyn. So I did wanna get that correct. So episode three has my favorite scene of the entire show in it, my favorite date, okay, group date for everyone on the show. Again, we still have plenty of women left on this show, but the way that they do it is they get all the women and the guys dressed up for a movie premiere, okay? And they're like, it's gonna be a movie premiere. They have them all dressed up. They have them walk the red carpet. It's very fun. And then they all sit down in the theater and the women are like, I hope it's like not a scary movie. I hope it's like a, a romance movie, whatever. No, do you know what it is? They show all of the women's in the moments. When they go off and do interviews one-on-one -on -one with a camera and they're like in a little background or they're off alone, those are called ITMs or in the moments, or at least that's what The Bachelor calls them and I just carry that over. Side note, I always comment, compare things to The Bachelor when I talk about these shows. And that's mainly because again, The Bachelor I believe is the currently the longest running uh, reality dating show. And um, they're kind of like the standard for a lot of these shows. They're either trying to differentiate themselves from The Bachelor, top The Bachelor, be better than The Bachelor, because The Bachelor itself is a beast that probably needs to be put down. But, you know, we just keep letting it go at this point. And so uh, that's why I'm calling, a lot of my references are gonna relate back to The Bachelor because that's just the standard that I'm comparing all this stuff to. And I, we can always say like, no, it stands on its own. The, rather they admit to it or not, every dating show currently, especially a network dating show, is competing with The Bachelor. And that's just really how it is. Like I mentioned in the first video, I loved that so many of these women were being very honest about what they wanted from a relationship, specifically money in regards to their relationship. Like, oh, I've only ever dated rich men. I uh, don't like people not having money. I have money, so he's gotta have money. You know, like things like that. I love that, okay? Because it's so much of it's so overproduced these days that they won't say that because it's like, it's not proper. But I loved that they were doing that, okay? But for this episode, the movie they're showing the women and the guys for the state is all of the in the moments, all of them, or at least all the ones where they are talking about money. And you know what? This needs to be the standard, especially on something like The Bachelor, because whatever, what ends up happening with The Bachelor and what ends up happening with, especially this season, The Bachelor, Clayton was a dumbass. I'm sorry. I, I, I stopped watching it. He was so infuriating. The Bachelor and The Bachelorette always say like, I didn't know, I didn't get to see these in the moments. The audience saw something different than I was experiencing with this person until after the show uh, finished taping and then the show started airing. But the guys here got to see the in the moments, which was just so, so good. I think that needs to be standard. The women were so caught off guard. Some of them were really fun and a bunch of them were just like, I only want to date someone with money. I'm high maintenance, blah, 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 blah. What ends up happening after that date, some of the women looked great. Some of them looked really bad, but pretty much everyone said something about money. I think even uh, they slipped in something about Carolyn, like, oh, you, if anyone says they don't want to be with someone with money, like they're lying or something like that, you know, that type of thing. Then Martin announces that there is going to be two coins or no, Martin doesn't announce the coins thing. He just has everyone vote. You cannot vote for yourself, but everyone vote who was the most genuine and the most ingenuine, okay, or disingenuous, ingenuine, disingenuous, compared to how they were portrayed in the clips versus how they are portrayed in the house. So the women who are voted for most genuine is Whitney and most disingenuous or most two-faced was Andrea. But then Martin is like, here's two coins for you women and gives one to Whitney and one to Andrea. And this coin means that you can steal time from one of the other women 
for a private date with the Joe of your choosing. So a bunch of the women are upset because you're getting rewarded for being two-faced, like for Andrea. But everyone seems to really like Whitney, so they don't really have a problem with that part. So like I mentioned in my previous video, Carolyn told Kurt that, you know, when you choose me, I want you to be certain, so I want you to date the other women. And I said, this is dangerous territory, because it is. That's very dangerous because at the very least, he's going to ignore you in favor of talking to other women. It's going to stoke jealousy because though you feel, you convince yourself you feel secure, that's not how those things play out. It just isn't. You're going to be uncomfortable with some point, it's even regardless of how often you tell yourself that we are leaving together, feelings of jealousy like that are going to pop up, especially when you're in a bubble and you can't like go off and do your job and not watch them flirting with someone else. Your life right now is this show, these women, if they start talking about Kurt, you're gonna get pissed off. That's just how it's going to happen. So at the movie night, they talk a little bit, but Kurt starts talking with Amanda. Immediately she gets upset or Carolyn gets upset, but then also Carolyn and Amanda talk and Amanda shares that she kind of feels like she's like the other woman in this sense. Like she feels like she's kind of cheating Caroline or Carolyn, ah, fuck, Carolyn, sorry. She feels like she's kind of like going behind her back. And so she like tells her like, I'm just leaving out like Kurt and I were talking or whatever. I think they kissed, I don't know, but they were talking and it, it just so Carolyn and Amanda are standing together and Kurt just gets upset because he's like, I don't like this. I don't like dating multiple women. I don't like feeling like I'm doing something wrong when I'm doing what she told me to do, which is talking to other women. And so Steven and Kurt end up going and basically hiding in the bathroom while Kurt is freaking out and kind of is trying to figure out if he wants to leave the show or not. And Steven is like, it's fine. It's fine. You're going to be okay. Like they're having a, it's a really good moment, I think, because it's just like, yeah, we're in this together. And that's why, <laughs> I don't know. I like the concept of that with the show because at the end of the day, they are kind of forced in together to be these two leads. Sure, they have Martin, but the only two people who know what they're going through is each other. And they're the only ones who really know, again, aside from Martin, who is really the millionaire and who isn't. So they are sharing of this secret. The date ends, it's mostly fine. I'm not gonna keep track of who got booted off here and there or whatever, okay? Eventually you'll figure out who the final four are and I'll make it clear. But next episode, we have the, the campfire date. Now this again, Carolyn and Kurt kind of steamrolled everything else. Steven is really kind of has like his pick of the women. Like he can really have time to connect with all of them because Kurt and Carolyn are kind of going at it all the time. What ends up being the set off of the, the issue this episode that basically takes over is they go on a camping trip. The guys are excited. Steven's very excited because this is his element. A bunch of the women are like, kind of against it, kind of not. They do a tug of war rope to see who can stay in like the little tents versus the really nice tents. There's glamping and then regular camping. It's kind of fun. I, they try to keep the Joe Millionaire slash regular Joe thing going for most of the episodes. Some of them, they kind of, towards the end, they kind of started not getting rid of the concept, but they just kind of let it fall by the wayside a little bit. Carolyn and Kurt are talking. And then at one point, Carolyn sits on Steven's lap or they're talking or something. And Kurt doesn't care. He's a little annoyed, but he doesn't care for the most part because if he gets to date, why would it be assumed that she can't date or whatever? But then at some point, Amanda sits on Kurt's lap and that upsets Carolyn because that's disrespectful to her and it's disrespectful to the other women. And then that's where we see the clip from the trailer where it's like, you're a grown ass man, like, and you need to speak your mind or whatever it is that Carolyn says to him. And it's a lot of back and forth. Steven gets involved and is like, what is going on? Like he, the, the way he speaks to Carolyn is kind of funny because it's like, she's, I I think he's kind of afraid of her. I don't know if he was just confused. There was a moment with Brianna and Brianna was just got a little too tipsy, okay? Kind of like what Rachel did in episode two. She just kind of got a little insecure, but what worked out really well here was this great moment between her and Martin where Martin, they were gonna go on like this ride because there was like a little carnival set up and there were these swings and Brianna was trying to put her, her shoe back on and she was on the ground. And Martin went to help her put her shoe on. She was like, can you help me? She was asking like, do you think I'm I'm pretty or something? Like, cause she felt ugly. And there was just this really sweet moment between Martin's a good host, okay? This is what we need. We need more hands-on hosts in these shows, okay? Versus like, here's what's happening, goodbye. And then going camping out in their trailer. Like Martin was on the ground, he was there. Martin is like, you know, you're, you're great. Like anyone would be lucky to have you, you know, that type of thing. Like he, I think also because he is a father, like that's where he kind of sees a lot of these women as like not just pawns in a show, but like actual human beings. As bad as that sounds, like I do think a lot of hoes are just like, let's see what happens. 
you know, but I think because he is a father with daughters, or at least that's what he says, that kind of, I think in a sense, regardless of what happens, kind of humanizes the women to him and makes him a better host. So they go on the ride, she ends up falling off and uh, Martin's like, okay, let's go. Like it's done. Like let's get you to sit down and calm down. And that's kind of it for the most part. At some point, one of the episodes, I don't know which one, but at some point, Rachel has a meltdown. I don't even fully understand what really happened. I think it's because Steven kissed her, but then he also kissed, why did I forget her name? She's one of the final four, Annie. So I believe because Steven kissed Annie and also kissed Rachel, that's what made Rachel upset or something. I don't know, but she's drunk. She's very upset. It's kind of like she was gone like smoke in the night. Like it's very odd how she leaves. There's meltdown. They're showing all of the women kind of watching and everything. The camera people, we're seeing them because they're trying to track her. She's packing up her stuff. Some of the girls are hiding under their blankets because they don't want to get yelled at because she's just kind of screaming and crying. At some point, Rachel, she's like, I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm not doing this. And just packs her stuff, gets in a car and leaves. And that's really it. And the guy, they tell the guys the next morning, it's just like, oh, okay. And then, like, it's kind of much of nothing. Andrea, who was one of the women who got the coin, uh, was voted off at some point. And because she had the coin and hadn't used it, she gave it to Jenny, who I talked about in my last video and said, you know, I really want to give this to you because you've always been great. Gave her the coin. The coin is the ultimate, can I steal you away? That's what the coins are, okay? And I've talked about these before. You gotta do it strategically. You can't just be a bitch about it. You gotta time it well. So what ends up happening is on one of these dates, yeah, so it's episode six, a bunch of the women get chosen for like select dates for the guys to get to know them better. They get broken up into two groups. First part of the day, Steven's gonna be with one group and Kurt's gonna be with another group and then they're gonna switch so that they both get individual time with the smaller group of women in smaller group. Carolyn, so is Brianna, and I believe Jenny as well. Like only a few of the women are left behind. And uh, part of the reason that Carolyn was left behind was so that Kurt could talk with Amanda more. What ends up happening is Kurt and Steven at one point swap, like Steven just sat down with the women. But Jenny is like, you know, I don't want him to forget about me. I don't wanna go home before I get the chance to use my coin like Andrea did. So she goes to Martin, tells Martin, I wanna use my coin for Steven. And Martin's like, okay, I'll make the arrangements. I like the idea of the coins, but yeah, it is dangerous. You gotta do well. I do think Whitney handled her coin situation better. Jenny is going to disrupt the date and have one-on-one, -on -one, like a private dinner with Steven. I'm cashing in my coin to have time with you. The girls kind of get jilted on this date, which is kind of the point of the coin. So. It does not work out well for Jenny. I believe Steven sends her home immediately after this because he was like kind of annoyed that she was inconsiderate. I don't even fully know what his reasoning was, but it was just like awkward. And so he's just like, yeah, no, I'm not a fan of this. I like think it's best for me to send you home or whatever. Does not work out. Jenny ends up getting sent home. Sarah is the influencer from the first episode who I talked about in the preview. She had previously on one of the elimination sessions or whatever, like stopped everything and was like, Kurt, can I talk to you really quick? And like steals Kurt aside and was like, I really think that there's something here. And I'm just worried that you aren't seeing enough of me or not getting enough time with me. Like she has a moment with him, which I do think is smart, especially right before an elimination, you shake things up. There's a lot of power plays being made here. You just gotta do them right. But that moment I think was good. But then what ends up happening is like the next day they're all, all the girls are hanging around by the pool and they're talking about which guy they like more because that's kind of the point they're at. And she says neither, she mentions one of the producers. Like, yeah, he's so hot. I kind of want to fuck the shit out of him, but like they bleep it out. And Martin overhears, it's very produced. Although I'm sure again, they're all mic'd. So I mean, it's like kind of like, do you really like these guys? Like, do these women forget they're mic'd? I just want to know. <laughs> uh, they're all mic'd, they all hear everything. Martin hears, they tell the guys and then she gets sent home. And then apparently when the episode aired, she immediately went on her Instagram and like tagged the producer and was like, hey, like might as well like shoot my shot with you since I'm not with one of these guys. I talked about this in the courtship video. I think that's realistic. You don't know who these guys are. It would make sense if you're not really attracted to one of them to kind of be like, okay, well, I'm still in this bubble with these producers. And also the, the thing that people don't see is that the producers are with these girls all the time. And that may not be the case with uh, Joe Millionaire. I don't know the situation with the producers, but usually with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, one producer has like four or five or six girls at the start. Eventually they get swindled down and you they are your point person for most of everything. And they are also talking with you for most of everything. And so 
you kind of form at least a friendship or a bond because of the nature of being produced. And so, yeah, it makes sense that like, she's kind of like, hi, you know, cause like, I don't know, maybe someone's telling her like, you know, you're so hot. Either of these guys would be lucky to have, you know, like I'm sure there's some type of weird mind game happening. The girls, family members come out for a dinner and to meet the guys and get a tour of the house and talk with their daughters. Most of them bring their parents or their siblings or whatever. And Kurt is excited because he thinks this is his chance to get to know Carolyn a bit more from her family. Um, however, Carolyn brings a friend, a lifelong friend. Kurt feels a little cheated by that. Um, also, Steven is getting closer with Annie and Kala. And the thing about Kala is Kala is kind of like still Switzerland at this point, but both Kurt and Steven notice that she is a, a difficulties opening up, okay? And so Steven particularly is hoping that her being around her family will help her to open up more. Oh, Whitney's parents were fun. I don't know, her dad was a blast. This is where we find out that Amanda because her mom and sister are there. And when they announce to the room that like, oh, one of these guys is worth $10 million, the other one isn't. Amanda's mom is like, what if we till they find out how much money you have or something. And that's where we learned that Amanda's family was left a trust fund by their grandfather. And so she is rich from generational wealth, but he does seem overall disappointed that he didn't get to meet someone from Carolyn's family the entire time. Steven was mainly struggling with, I believe Annie's father and trying to explain how it seems like that's the only one that Steven was really frustrated by not being able to tell, I have money, I can be with your daughter wherever. Because Annie lives in New York, he is from Gallatin, Missouri. And so the father was kind of like, you know, she has her life in New York. Like, I don't think that it's fair for her to move. That was the only time where I really saw Steven getting frustrated with not being able to tell people that he had money. The girls all go on trips to go see Steven's family and then Kurt's family. And Kurt's parents clock his dynamic with Carolyn immediately. They straight up tell him, look, she's very reminiscent of your last relationship and we know how that worked out. And basically the assumption is that uh, Kurt can't see through passion. He can't think critically when he's really interested in someone and doesn't seem, not red flags are not the word, but just like warning signs. So his family, like they were like, oh, she's very sweet, but like, this is the what we're seeing. Kala got along really uh, well with his family and was opening up a lot with his mother because I think Kala volunteers with animals and then his mom worked at a shelter or something. Like there was, there was, an, there was an animal connection and they were just getting along really well. And Kurt's like, that's the most I've ever heard you talk like about Kala. It was funny to see how the parents would clock like, yeah, she's not into you like that <laughs> to like the, some of the women who are very clearly into um, uh, Stephen over Kurt. Then we go to Stephen's family. And the funny bit with Stephen is Stephen is like, okay, we've got too many Range Rovers in the driveway, too many nice cars in the driveway. And also every single one of my family has a Rolex on their wrist. They're like, we can't talk about X, Y, and Z, whatever. Family comes and meets them. So what ends up happening at this point is all of the girls have to say, who they're interested in specifically. And so two of the women, Kala and Whitney, both say they're still deciding. Everyone else chooses who they're interested in. Annie and Amber choose Steven, Carolyn and Amanda choose Kurt, obviously. So all the women get to go on dates with the guys. And then afterwards, they're not returning to the manor. They are all going to hotel rooms individually. So there is no like overlap and they don't have to worry about like stressing out over how their dates compared to everyone else, which I do like at this point. What ends up happening is Kala and uh, Whitney both go on dates with Steven and Kurt. So Kala goes on a date with, I think Steven first, and then goes on the date with Kurt and is like, I just feel like I have more of a connection with Steven. And Kurt's like, okay, cool. Then we can just hang out and have like a good time. Like he, he's excited to just kind of enjoy time with her and not have to worry that he's another girl to choose between, I think. But Whitney goes on the date with Steven and it goes well, they're having fun. But then they start talking about getting married and having kids. And Whitney, I think is 23 or 24. She's pretty young. Um, she's my age. And uh, she isn't even thinking about marriage and kids right now. It's not even a possibility for her right now. And Steven is ready for marriage and kids. And so that right there, it's like our lives are just in two position, different points. They sent someone home earlier on in the season for that very reason. Steven and Kurt talk and he shares like his hesitations about Whitney. And then Whitney and Kurt go on their date. And Whitney tells him like, you know, I really actually think I'm interested in Steven. 
And Kurt's like, okay, so Kurt gets dumped twice, but then Kurt tells Steven like, hey, she's on, she just dumped me and she's on her way to you. Steven then sends her home and she's so excited when she comes out of the house. She's so excited to see him. Again, yeah, no, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna send you home. So he also sent Amber home too. And he just kind of was letting Amber ramble a little bit, but Amber was talking about really deep conversations. He just didn't feel like they were having enough of a fun time together. Um, and he was like, you know, I want the deep connection, but I also want, you know, fun and excitement and silliness. And she was like, I just thought you wanted to have a deep conversation, which I mean, at this point in the, the dynamic, yeah, I would also kind of think that like, shouldn't we talk about serious things now? We can have fun too, but like, we're kind of in the 11th hour here. We need to be on the same page about stuff, but he ends up sending her home and she's obviously upset because she's been like pouring her heart out to him for like an hour. Now we are down to the final four. We are down to Kala and Annie for Steven and Amanda and Carolyn for Kurt. Okay, the women kind of always assume that like, yes, it's gonna be Carolyn. It's, he's gonna choose Carolyn. My thought originally was that, yeah, it's gonna be Carolyn. But then the more we got into the show, the more I was like, he's not gonna do it. I don't think he will. I think his parents got in his mindset, but then also he kept having questions and issues about what their life would look like together after the show, which I think is important. And considering also that Carolyn has a son and an ex-husband to also be considered in this dynamic, it makes sense that Kurt would have questions about it and have insecurities about it and things to know. And Carolyn just kept kind of not brushing them aside. See, okay, I get where both of them are coming from in this, okay? Because Kurt has his reservations and his questions and Carolyn kind of kept being like, why are you questioning our like connection? Like let's, I can give into your fear or I can just feel confident that we will figure it out together and we will get through this together. And I get where both of them are coming from because if I'm Carolyn, yeah, I don't want to give into his fears and have, maybe create more for him if I want to be with him, you know? And like, I know that's not, in my opinion, I'm sorry, it's not the mature option. I think it's, you should deal with your fears and your concerns and your partner's fears and concerns in a relationship. I think he had every right to have concerns and it makes sense that they would talk about those. But in the context of like, I don't know, oh, being a woman, I get why she wouldn't want to feed into that and like basically have it become a self-fulfilling prophecy for him where if he digs enough, she's going to validate his fears. And then that alone is going to cancel it off. And he's going to be like, okay, she's more trouble than she's worth, you know? And I, so I get why she wouldn't want to give into his fears and kept kind of brushing them off. Like we have such great chemistry. We have such a great connection. Like, why can't we just focus on that? I get where that's coming from too. I don't know. I, I anyways, final four. I thought that Steven was going to choose Annie. I did. I understood why Kurt was, was not going to choose Carolyn. And I thought he was going to choose Amanda, but I thought that Stephen was going to choose Annie. I did because um, I think Kala got a weird edit. I really do. I think they tried to make it seem like a twist, but I think they gave Kala a weird edit in doing that. It seems like at the end, Stephen was kind of looking for reasons to get rid of Annie. And so at some point it was like, we are too similar. Like we are too much alike. And is that what I want from a relationship? I don't know. I think if, if you're just more interested in Kala, that's one thing. But Kala, they kept saying like, there's a mystery to her. And maybe in Steven's mind, it's like, oh, I'll never be bored because I'll always be learning new things about Kala. Whereas Annie, we're so similar. I feel like I know her already that it's not exciting potentially down the line. And that's going to be a problem. Steven has a ring. I don't think Kurt had a ring. Uh, they gave it kind of both. And they were like, do you want to propose? You can, but it's not really a proposal ceremony. Uh, I think when Steven presents the ring to Kala, he's like, I want this ring to be a promise to make this work, basically, which is the weirdest way of saying a promise ring. He chooses Amanda, he sends Carolyn home. Carolyn has this great moment where she like shares her story, shares her heart with him. And so does Annie. And then Kurt just says, I don't choose you. I, I have stronger feelings for someone else. And Carolyn is silent. And Kurt just says, please say something. And she just says, can I go now? <laughs> it's so good. She just walks out and he's just like, yeah, okay, goodbye. Uh, and she just leaves, goes in the car and she's like, it's a slap in the face. If he's this insecure about everything, then he's not the man for me, which 
I like a lot. And she has kept that going. Um, we'll talk about after things wrapped and all that in a minute, but he chooses Amanda, tells her like, I choose you, that all that. And then they do the money reveal. And this is where I felt dissatisfied because they have Steven go first. And I'm sorry, Steven, I'm sure you meant this endearing and caring. It was the douchiest way, the douchiest nice guy way you could tell someone you are rich as fuck. Cause he is like, you know, I've always been raised to learn that like, as long as you are full with love and uh, happy with people you wish, you, you are a very rich man. As far as actual money goes, I have a lot of it. Like it was, and you were kind of smiling as you were saying it. Like you felt, you felt good about the fact that you had some do re me, which is fine. But like, it was not the sweet enduring thing that you thought it was, but Kayla liked it. So it's fine. It was like, have you ever been on a helicopter? Like, <laughs> But yeah, so Kayla is just like, oh, okay. Like I, that didn't play a part in me wanting to be with you or whatever. They tell Amanda that he's like, I am not the millionaire. Martin tells her to take a moment to herself and she walks away. Here's what I think happened. She did not give you what you wanted because I'm assuming you didn't in the moment and we didn't get that. So we don't really get her reaction because she's like, money does not matter to me. It's not the most important thing. Yeah, and they're happy together at the end. Joe Millionaire, see you next time. We get a little tease from Martin. Until next time, blah, blah, blah. Side note, if there is a season two, I will be on it. I'll do it. As much as I'm about to complain about the ending, I love this show, okay? <laughs> so much. This is the most fun I've had with a reality dating show in a while, okay? So uh, producers, if any of you are watching this, let's do it if you get a season two. But I do think you did the reveal wrong. When your whole premise of this show is, can someone fall in love without money being a factor, whether you have it or don't? That's the whole premise of this show and the test of the experiment. The way that you have it done, it feels lackluster and kind of, cheap the way that you did it because here's how women work, <laughs> especially on a show like this, the women already made their choice of who they wanted to be with. And then the guys make their choice and make it clear that yes, I choose you. Okay. You sent the women home. The other two women home. You sent Annie and Carolyn home. So the woman already knows, okay, he's chosen, chosen me. So then you say you do have money or you don't. The only reaction you can possibly get is I don't care about money. I care about him. You know, that's the only reaction you could possibly get at that point because they know that the camera's around them because they've been chosen. They know that. So what I'm assuming is that there wasn't in the moment with Amanda and she did not give you what you want. And that's why we did not get it. And that's why it felt like a weird little jump between why don't you take a moment to yourself and then coming back and sharing her opinions of money doesn't matter to me. I think there would have been, I'm assuming what she told you was like, I I am ready to fall in love with him. You know, now that he's chosen me, I'm I'm here. You know, I'm ready. I don't care about money. That's all she was going to give you because she's been chosen already. This is how you do this to fit your, your story. You have all the final four women line up. You have Martin, you have the guys, you have the guys tell the truth. I have money. I have, I don't standing next to each other, get all the girls reactions in the moment. And then immediately you separate the women and do individual ITMs immediately. Let them talk. Let them ask them questions. Are you sure? Like, are you certain about your choice? Are you sure about this now? You know, now that you know he doesn't have money, you know, get those reactions. That's how you get the legitimate reactions. And then you have them because you're going to have, maybe you'll have someone be like, okay, I don't want to be with him now because he doesn't have money. Maybe you'll get that, but we wouldn't get that. We wouldn't know if that was going to happen with the way that you guys did it. But once you've already made it clear that this is the one that's being chosen, that's it. Because in the moment with the four women remaining, you don't know if they're going to pick you or not yet. So the power is on the women to make that call, okay? Uh, can you fall on someone regardless of money or love, regardless of money or not? You can still answer that question with all four women there. The way that you did it, I feel like the question is not there anymore. That's my take. We have the dramatic irony effect, okay? The audience knows something the contestants don't. We know who the millionaire is and who isn't. So their reactions are what we've been waiting for. And I feel like we didn't get that from any of the four women, let alone Amanda and Kala, okay? Okay, other than like Kala being like, wait, you have a helicopter? Do you like fly it like by yourself? Like you're a pilot? What? Other than that, we didn't really get a whole lot. And then we get the moment of them like, you know, the guys hugging, the girls like, I'm so glad it's you. Kurt and Amanda broke up. Kurt did a little statement with someone about it. Sowers, on the other hand, chose Amanda Pace. And while they tried to date when the show wrapped in October, they broke up during the first week of December. Things are a lot different when you were dating in the real world. It's difficult to hang out and stuff. We snuck around and hung out a little bit. 
And I just think we both realize after the show, we're not really a good fit for each other. We have very different lives, I think in general, and our futures look a little bit different. So Kurt talks about how a bit about the exit of Carolyn's dramatic exit, which I mean, he he says, yeah, her exit was pretty dramatic and she's still being pretty dramatic. You, you yourself said that you made someone fall in love with you and then you broke her heart. Like you yourself say that on the shows. I mean, yeah, I think a little drama is your cross to bear now, my guy. I definitely kept it respectful. I would not have reached out to any of the women while Amanda and I were together, but he admits that he reached out to a bunch of the women after the, uh, he and Amanda broke up. We're all kind of trauma bonded. So I've been able to maintain a lot of friendship with some of the women after the show. And now with Carolyn, I thought that maybe we can be cordial as well. It seems like she's trying to manipulate that situation a little bit right now. And I don't really know what her end goal is. Maybe her end goal is just to keep a little drama going. I'm not really sure. There's no future for her and I either. That has and will always be off the table. Carolyn also made comments about it on TMZ and she shared how he had reached out to her and she uh, was being respectful to both her and Amanda when Kurt reached out to her and was like, look, while you guys are dating, I don't think we should be talking. But she had a sense that they had broken up. And so they tried talking, but then she felt that because his insecurities about her son and her ex were still there, that those would always be there. And she was like, just decided that it was best to not continue a relationship uh, because of that. Him mentioning that she's still being dramatic and drawing out the process. I don't see that unless I'm missing something. On Instagram, she is posting more about her son. Uh, her and Annie have become good friends. They did a little trip together after the show wrapped. I like that. Like, hey, we were both dubbed. Let's go on vacation together. And side note, uh, all of these people always end up making podcasts. Um, I think you guys should make a podcast called uh, Dumped, Dumping on Reality or Dumped on Reality. I don't know, something like that. But Dumping on Reality is more fun. And then it's like the only guests you have are people who have been publicly dumped on reality TV. You guys can talk about really whatever you want. You can talk about the shows, you can talk about life, you can talk about dating in general, posting on reality TV, who cares? I just think dumping on reality is a good premise. And then the only guess you can have are people who are dumped on reality TV. And with the way that these shows work now, you have a lot of fodder. I just think that'd be really fun. I'm giving you this idea for free. Take it, do with it what you will. You two seem fun. I think you guys could have a fun podcast. Anyway, Kala and Steven are still very much together. They're adorable. They travel back and forth. They just went back to Texas. It looks like uh, they're talking about buying a house together. They seem cute. I usually like to wait a little longer, but I mean, right now, they're, I'm not seeing any red flags from them. They seem to be very much into each other still. And yeah, <laughs> all in all, please have a season two. I don't care what you do. I don't think you need to do like what the original Joe Millionaires did where they tried to go to like another country and like recreate the stunt. I think you just need to make it very clear that the show is Joe Millionaire and then also just vet the women extensively to make sure that they don't know who the millionaire is and who isn't. You know, like I'm checking, scrolling through Instagram following counts and making sure that they're not following the leads for any reason or anything like that. Uh, and if you happen to cast me, all the better. <laughs> and like I said, I really like this show. It's still available on Hulu the first season if you would like to watch it. The women are uh, all on social media that I can see. Um, Annie seems fun. She seems like a fun time. She's in New York. She's looking for a new apartment right now. Carolyn lives in California. Carolyn... Uh, do I know you? I'm serious. When I showed my friend the show, cause I was bullying everyone into watching this show. She also thought you looked familiar. You lived, you're in Newport or Laguna or something. I grew up in Orange County. Did we bump past at some point? I don't know. You do look familiar. And I, I just thought it was like, oh, it's cause I've seen her on this show. Like I just thought it was that. I don't know. Do we know each other? Let me know. Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone from the show would like to talk about the experience, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to have you on the Swell Shenanigans podcast uh, to talk about your experience of being on a reality TV dating show in an inaugural season. I know there's contracts for things like this, but if any of you are, are willing to have a conversation with me, I would love to talk about this, um, about you know falling in love or dating a mystery millionaire on reality TV. Let me know, comment down below or send me an email. That'd be great. And that's really gonna be it. Uh, did you watch Joe Millionaire? Did you watch because of my video. <laughs> Do you think they're going to get a season two? How would you feel about uh, getting as far as these women did and then finding out uh, that one of them had money and one of them didn't? Do you think that my setup for the ending reveal would be better? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. Like someone on my social media, they'll be up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Can 
Can I go now? I love that. That's great. That's like, uh, that's like, um, Gabby being like, uh, to play and being like, can I walk you out? And her being like, no. <laughs> So good. I love it. Thank you, Adri, Allen, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, China, Devin, Dirty, One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Incognito, Jack, Ray, Joe, John, M, Joseph, Jordan, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexi, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Mimo, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timmy, Tom, Wendy, William, Winter, Zendry, Zwing.